What a guan, people out there, how y'all doing? We are back in London town and we are ready to have a session with y'all. Um, so, welcome to a very, very long awaited return to May Leaf Sessions. Hello, I'm alone. Yes, I'm alone because Aya is still on sort of jet laggy um, hours and so she's having trouble sleeping. So Celine's gone up there to try to help her, but Celine, I'm sure, will be joining us in the hot seat very, very soon. Hello, everybody. Let us know where you're drinking from and what you are drinking. And um, we're going to do some shout outs. It's been a long time, man. It's been a month, pretty much. Marco, hello. Beth, hello. From Germany, drinking almond blossom. We found a new Dan song yesterday, which is mwah, loving it. So we just ordered that. Um, hello, November Crash from Kiel. Hello, Bo from Denmark. I saw you bought Lush Disciple. Quick on the mark. A Sad Hope from South Dakota. Bibi from Germany. Hello, 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 hello. Murat, hey, what's happening? What's happening is I'm ready to sample some green tea. 2024 green tea. Hello, Scott. Saw Scott in the, at the expo. He was a, a lifesaver at the expo. Brought loads of teaware. Brought loads of tea. Helped me out and then got me drunk afterwards on some nice rum. So thank you so much, Scott. Sorry I didn't get to spend more time with you. It was, uh, it was a bit of a mad time, but I was really appreciative that you came along and that we got to hang out a little bit. Nice to see you there. Sort of Paul, drinking Shome. Dane, is a bit quiet? Is a bit quiet, is it? Is it a bit quiet? I'll turn it up. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hopefully that is okay. Um, Scott, yes, it was a blast. It was, it was, it was fun. Uh, although, you know, I was still, when I arrived, I arrived on the Sunday night and I had a lecture or a workshop on the Monday morning. And so I never really caught up my sleep. So it was a little bit, a little bit over the, uh, a little bit all over the place, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, Empirical 101, hello from PNW. What's PNW? I should know what PNW is. Drinking Fukumushi Saki Midori. Ryan from Missouri. Antonolo, hey, first time, newbie, Anthony, welcome to the live stream, welcome to the chat, big up yourselves for tuning in, every one of you, the live crew, the tea slingers in the house, Luff Nyan, I've been waiting for the green, so excited, I started my tea journey end of last year, let me just put some comments up, um, and I'm so looking forward to trying fresh greens, yep, um, sorry, my ear just fell off, did I turn it up too loud, if it's too loud, then let me know. Um, Kimberly's Kyusu, no tea for me, but I did have Young Gushu 2022 today. That's still kicking around. 2023 is still around. Uh, Pacific Northwest. Thank you for the clarification. Connor from Pennsylvania. Um, lovely to see you all here in the chat. And I hope that you're all having a lovely Wednesday evening, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, however, whatever time it is in your part of the world. So today we are, let me just clear this. Today we are going to be sampling some green teas from Sichuan. Now, um, I've been sampling teas ever since I got back, like a lot. In fact, we sampled some teas before we went away. And then when we got back, there was obviously a load of teas. Uh, now it's what, April 10th. Now is the, is the time where, where amazing tea is being picked. The last probably three weeks has been amazing teas. Um, but Sichuan is, is the earliest province um, in terms of picking one of the earlier provinces. So it's been picking since February, March. But I think that anything sort of in February is probably a bit too early. March is okay. Uh, mid-March, um, as I've said many, many times, uh, and you're probably getting bored of me here uh, saying it, but I'll say it one more time. The problem with very, very early pick teas is it's fine if they naturally grow at that time, you know, with the heirloom cultivars of that area. It is not okay, in my opinion, if the heirloom cultivars are ripped out and replaced by early flushing cultivars that don't taste so good and not heirloom and not sort of indigenous to that land and are just there to be basically flushing earlier so they can get it to market earlier. And a lot of the teas that we taste, especially like the Wunyu Zhao, uh, Long Jings and stuff like that, they're just not good enough for me. Um, so that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to repeat that too often, but I just want to make that clear. However, Sichuan teas, definitely March teas are okay. And we've got some Stella, I think, just by the look, some Stella green teas here. 
and I am judging by look. This is sent from a scout in Sichuan. Um, I don't know anything about them. Um, I've just numbered them, as you can probably see on the actual um, scoops. They're just numbered. And so I'm going to taste them blind, as I always do whenever we do uh, tastings for um, the May leaf uh, sampling. I always try to keep it as blind as possible. Sometimes it's a bit difficult because, you know, I know the supplier if it comes in. I know the sample. But um, most of the time, it's OK. We can blind it and it allows me to taste without too many biases. And I have to say, though, these look pretty stellar and I'm pretty sure that I know who the supplier is. And if it is, uh, then I know that these are going to be expensive teas. So I'm going to try them. Uh, we're going to hopefully we're going to try them, Celine and I. We're going to give you our assessments. And I think it's a nice thing to do for you to see how we do our sampling and how we sort of assess stuff. Um, and then we will reveal, you know, what they are in pricing, although it's pretty obvious what they are. Um, but any questions out there before we get started? I'm going to wait for Selena a little bit. So any questions? Now is the time to ask them. Any questions you might have about the expo, perhaps, or about um, 2024 harvests? Uh, let me know and I will try my best to answer them. I heard that it's not been great in Westlake um, this year. Um, that there was a, a late frost that didn't really help help um, the harvest. So um, I'm hoping that that's not going to affect things. However, I have already selected my Longjing 2024, my Imperial Green and Longjing Supreme. So I'm very, very happy with uh, about those. But I hope that, you know, uh, green tea gen in general, green tea um, has been uh, good in the Zhejiang area. Um, Marco, you underestimate how desperate we are after green, greenless winter. I, this is why I say it, because I know how des I get desperate as well. I want to taste green teas, but I know from experience that I hold back in March and then, you know, taste in April. Jonathan, any Vegas vlogs? You know what? <clears throat> I'll be honest with you guys. <clears throat> as you can, as you probably um, saw by the absence of live streams and uh, too much posting, you know, it was uh, it was a hectic time in Vegas, and also I just wanted to have some time with the family, just to to chill out. Um, so we did shoot some shorts, just very short videos, just fun little videos, which will come out as our shorts, just like one minute things. But I didn't do any vlog. Um, you know, the the T Expo is it's not really that much to vlog. You've probably seen it. It's just a big expo full of like stands. Um, and yes, I could have done something, but I just felt like I was there to, to meet people and do workshops rather than do much filming. Um, Vegas stories or must they stay in Vegas? Uh, no, there was no, no, no like untoward activity. I didn't even gamble, which was a, a bit of a shock because I thought I would at least um, have a little uh, gamble. But the main issue was that I was at the expo all the time. And then afterwards, I was with my family. And obviously, my little girl can't go into the gambling areas. We tried actually went in, but we were told to get out. Um, so therefore, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was not possible to do much gambling. Um, instead, it was all about tea, and then just trying to run around and have some food and, and look around Vegas, which I have to say, was, um, was uh, predictably bizarre. <laughs> let's say um and it was it was it was it was fun um to see it and it was yeah as as expected a, a, a mad mishmash of of craziness um in a in a city which uh clearly has just got one um purpose at least for the people visiting which is just go hard and have fun we speak, spoke to a lot of the uh taxi drivers or uber drivers and the stories they were telling me of millionaires losing all their money overnight and stuff was hysterical um, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mark, Marco. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got some family time as well. Um, so in other words, you were stoned the whole time. Hey, Jim, you know what? Yes, we did hit up, um, some of the, the dispensaries. Um, I did go to, what was it? Planet 13, you know, the largest one just to sort of see it, just to see, you know, what, what such a big dispensary was. And we got some good stuff there. It was, it was nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, when you come back to the UK, it makes you realize how far behind we are in terms of, you know, the choice and the ability to actually purchase anything. So it was a little bit like, oh, my God, why can't we have this in London? Um, but it was it was fun. And, and New York is different because when we went to New York, it was very like the, the whole scene 
I mean, it's obviously legal there, but it's like a different thing. In Vegas, it was like very dispensary led and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, so yes, we were family time and, uh, and, and hitting the dispensaries. It's okay, Don, we understand now, tell us everything. Hey, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so we went to uh, Vegas um, and spent about four nights there. Um, Expo was good, uh, did three workshops. Uh, which I think went down well. If you happen to have been there, then let us know. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Hopefully, you enjoyed the the, the workshops um, and got to meet lots of people, which was great. I mean, the meetup was really fun. Um, Scott like brought loads of teaware, and and we could just brew up. and And the people at the expo were really um, supportive and helpful, like helping me to to handle the meetup, which was great. It was nice to see some some faces. Um, it was a, it was a, a fun time, and uh, the expo itself. I think that the the workshops. I think it was hard. Obviously, I didn't go to any workshops, so I can't I can't judge those. But you know, the subject matter looked good. Uh, I met the guys from Camellia, and that it looked like they were going to have a fun time with their fine fine tea tasting. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it was nice. But the, the expo itself, I think you know, it felt a bit it felt a bit overtaken because it was it was mixed with a food and beverage expo which was massive um and so it felt like the tea expo like occupied um a little corner even though it was it was you know sizable it was okay but like compared with the the food and drink expo it was it was tiny um and also i have to say i think that um i think that i'm going to burn some bridges here but i'll say it anyway i think that the the, the, the actual exhibitors could be updated. Uh, I think that it was, it was a lot of the same exhibitors that I saw when we went uh, 10 years ago. Um, lots of sort of more big wholesalers um, and a little bit less Gong Fu centric, a little bit less, you know, um, true tea centric, a little bit more, you know, faux specialty stuff. Um, so it was a little bit like, oh, haven't, we, haven't we pushed through this yet um but yeah i mean hopefully hopefully we'll uh we'll see what happens in future expos but um yeah it, it was a bit small and a, a little bit like i felt like it needed a bit of an injection of some new blood um in terms of the exhibitors but hey that's the way um is Celine gonna make a surprise appearance hopefully she'll 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 come she's just um helping aya to to get to sleep um Scott says, I was the king of the tea bar. I'm not sure about that, but it was a lot of fun. What was the worst thing about the trip? The worst thing about the trip? You know, we had a great time. I think, you know, there was not really anything that was particularly like hit us hard. I think uh, we were quite surprised at how pricey the US is. It seems to be a little bit more expensive than I recall. Um, and so, you know, that was a bit of like, oh, our budget's gone out the window a little bit. Um, flights were okay. Everything was, was good. I, I have got nothing bad to say about the trip. It was a lot of fun. We then went, uh, we then drove into the Grand Canyon, spent some time there, which was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then we drove down to Sedona. Um, and Sedona is like, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, you know, if you've never been, um, it is a beautiful place with those rocks. I mean, it is just incredible. So spent some time in Sedona with our um, Planet 13 goodies and obviously um, had some fun, um, like just trekking around the mountain, uh, around the rocks. It was it was a lot of fun. And so, um, yeah, a little bit bougie, a little bit like, you know, clearly a lot of rich people go there. Um, but it was it was it was fun. Um, good times in Sedona. Um, but yeah, Into Earth says we're going through a bit of an inflation period right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Inflation is everywhere, but it just, it was a bit like, oh, so you can't get a meal for less than $50 per person, really. Um, well, you can, but you know what I mean. We wanted to hit some of the restaurants. Ate some really good food. Ate some really, really good food, as, as you'd expect. Um, shout out to Public Us. Ooh, I have to send them some teas. Reminder, reminder, reminder. Um, Public Us in Vegas. Um, just uh, walking down Vegas, uh, we, we were sitting there drinking some coffee because we were trying various coffee places as well. Um, and a guy recognized us 
um, and told us he worked at Public Us, which was recommended by some tea heads already. So we went to check out Public Us. Love that place. Like, love that place. One of the best places that we saw in Vegas, Public Us. Just a beautiful, airy, bright cafe with the most amazing waffles I have ever eaten. This combo between a sort of um, yeasted Belgian waffle and like a, a, a sort of crispy batter. It was amazing. Public us, shout out. We had some great food there, brunchy and just the, the vibe there and the people working there and the tea head mentality there was incredible. Um, amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, Dia says, I love Sedona. Used to go there for Christmas to visit my parents. It is amazing, incredible. Um, it is a special place. Um, so yeah, uh, what else? We went to New York and did a, a lot of uh, a lot of pizza eating. I wanted to try to hit up loads of pizza places um, and try to find out my favorites. We were thinking of getting a um, train or a bus to New Haven uh, to to go and have some abits, but it it was just too expensive, and I just thought it's not fair on my little girl to trek up for a day to New Haven. But it was kind of like oh, I was tempted trying to find some some New Haven pies. Uh, so that was that was um, something that was on the plan, but we still ate tons of pizza in New York and obviously lots of other food and uh, donuts and all sorts. And, you know, it was a bit of a, a, a gluttonous affair, but that's what holidays should be. Um, Don, do you get recognized by people in the US as DJ Taishan? No, not really. I get recognized in the US as tea head Don, which is um, actually really, um, it's funny, it's like I get recognized more in the US than in the UK. Obviously at the tea house, like people come to the tea house, they know us, but like it, it seems to be only in the US or actually weirdly in China that people come up to me and say just randomly. Um, so it was kind of fun. Um, American donuts, yeah. I mean, there's one donut place in New York called Donut Plant and their donuts like just, I'm, I've done a short video about it, I'll put it out. Um, it is just like next level. Um, it just an amazing donut, yeasted, and the coconut cream. I mean, incredible, incredible. So we're gonna um, try some of these teas, and uh, unfortunately, Selena is still not with us, but it's okay. She'll join us shortly. Um, <laughs> came to the U.S. for more tasting note vocabulary. I'm always searching for tasting note vocabulary. That's my whole thing, right? Go out, well, it's not my whole thing. I like to taste food and drink, but like obviously it feeds back, you know, put it on business expense. No, I don't, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> the way I've been giving people your teas, Kansas will know you quite well soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was, it is a bit weird, you know, just to walk down the street and be recognized. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but you know, it. Uh, it's. Uh, it's kind of a, a bit disarming in, in a great way. Um, any recommendations for beginner price point teas on your site? Beginner price point teas. Yeah, I mean, look, all of the teas that are on the, on the site are teas that I love, that we love. So, you know, if they're more affordable, that doesn't mean that they are, you know, like, mm, okay teas. We really like them. Um, we, we wouldn't buy them otherwise. Um, so just, you can just browse, you can sort by price on the website and look at sort of low to high and try to pick out ones that interest you. Uh, yeah, DJ Taishan, yeah, that's a, that was, a, that was the olden days. Um, <laughs> thank you, Connor. I, I don't know if I'm changing tea culture, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm happy to contribute. Um, so thank you. Uh, die Gutesten. Always happy to see Don, especially when he's tasting tea and describing it. Thank you. Well, I've got lots, we've got some short videos of me tasting other things in the US, um, but now let's talk about tea. Uh, David asks, or David, why did I assume you were David? When will the next dance song be launched on the Mayleaf site? We just bought it yesterday, so it's not going to be for at least a few weeks, if not a month. Um, it's a spring uh, dance song. It's like a snow spring dance song. So similar to Snow Phoenix, but different. It's a spring harvest, but it still has that very snowy quality, but, but tons and tons of fruit um, and honey. And it is just a mega tea. 
that I was not expecting. But, you know, that's the great thing about scouts. They just find stuff and they go, you should check this out. Um, it's amazing. It's like um, I'm in such a, a privileged position. It's like when I was in the music industry, I, uh, I always used to go to lots of record shops, etc., cetera, and, and buy records. And then like people would just start sending me stuff as a DJ or you'd go to like a record shop and the people would know you and they'd have stuff under the counter. They go here, try this. And it's sort of like it's so wonderful that that's now translated in terms of tea where people just like pass me little, you know, little bits of tea. In fact, I just got a message um, today from somebody who has access to Longjing from the 18 bushes, the original 18 bushes. And like he said, I can't send you a sample because insane prices, right? We're talking about probably retail around two and a half grand per 10 grams, right? Yeah, about $2,500 retail per 10 grams, okay? 18 bush tea. Um, but he said, you know, I've got access to it. Do you want in? La la la, it's all, authentic, all, all authenticated. And I was just like, oh, you kidding me? That is something that I've always wanted to do is to try the 18 bushes, right? But like, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. He said, well, if I come to London, then I'll definitely have a session with you. And I'm like, come to London. I'll pay for your, your ticket. It'll be quick. It'll be cheaper than, <laughs> than, than buying the tea. Man, isn't that incredible? The 18 bushes. I never, th I, I went, I've been to, to Shifang, to, to Lion's Head, obviously quite a few times, seen those 18 bushes. I've even like sneakily picked a, a, a leaf and just nabbed it in my mouth. Um, because, uh, because it was more sort of winter time. They were being a little bit more like lackadaisical with security. Um, but yeah, to try the actual harvest, that would be something special. Anyway, so let's see what's happening with these green teas. I'll show you the close up. We've got six green teas here, although I think they're not green teas. I think that these three are yellows. Um, let's start with number one. That looks to me like an incredibly high quality Ganlu, um, AKA um, Sweet Dew. Is that a bit dark? It's a bit dark, isn't it? Let me just turn this up a bit. Boom. Brighten up, people. Brighten up. Okay, so Ganlu, and this looks like another Ganlu. So I've got two Ganlus here. Uh, Ganlu is with one of the oldest green teas. Uh, around. In fact, it's probably one of the first ever cultivated teas um, and so majorly historic. And then this one here is clearly uh, Juye Ching, also known as Bamboo Sabre. I've already been tasting multiple Juye Chings before um, today and none of them meet the mark. They are always, I always have the same problem with Juye Chings, which is they are too raw, they are too green. Um, they need to have brothiness, they need to have warmth, and the color of this is exciting me. And then here, try showing the tea from the other side, it's focusing on it. Okay, let me try. Let's see. This one here, oh, come on, focus on. This one here is... Um, Meng Ding Huang Ya, AKA Sovereign Bud. So we've got, it looks like to me, well, I'm guessing what these are, but I'm guessing based on look. We've got three teas which are yellow. So these are the Meng Ding Huang Ya, I think. I'll know better when I taste. We've got two Gan Lu's and we've got one Ju Ye Ching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, hold on, let me just, I, I've got them numbered, so I want to put them in the right order. I hope that's the right order. Did I just mess this up? Classic, classic me to do that, wouldn't it? I think so. I think this is okay. So we're going to start with the um, Ganlu. And I'm going to do these one at a time because they are such expensive teas. Again, my guess, but judging by the look, and like, let me just show you one more time the look of that. Gun Lu. 
That is some frosty trichomed gunlu. That's how I like my gunlu to look. Like really, really fine, really, really wispy. Gunlu. Sweet dew. Sweet, sweet dew. Hui gan. Hui gan. Sweet. But not, sorry, hui gan sweet. That means nothing to you. Hui gan is that returning sweetness, right? So the word gan, gan is sweet, but it's not sweet in terms of taste. It's sweet like the sweetness of sweet sorrow or the sweetness of, of a, a, a beautiful breeze, right? It's that kind of sweet, sweet you. Um, right. We're brewing up in our 100 mil guy ones and I didn't heat it up, so we'll do that right now. And uh, hopefully we will find a sweet dew 2024. Always unknown as to whether or not we're going to find a tea because if they're not good enough, they're not good enough. So we shall see. Got a little Buddha here. In they go. Let's give it a smell. Oh, immediately I love it because it is shortbreads. Shortbread, just so much warmth. And look, let me just say from the outset, with green teas, the thing that, I, that set apart the great green teas from the good green teas is whether or not they are not just about freshness. You need, need, need it to be about nourishment. And nourishment means brothiness to me for green teas. Ibizinga, yes, looks more like Ganjalu. I agree, it has a bit of a ganja look to it. Oh, it is incredible. It is an incredible smell. I would be close to saying that I would buy this on that smell. Shortbread, um, some, some almonds, some lightly toasted almonds, um, some salted butter, uh, a little bit of, um, a little bit of butterscotch. So it's so warm and so sweet. Now let's see what happens when, well, you know what? I'm not even going to, um, I'm not even going to rinse this. I'm just going to go straight in and that was too hot. So this is why I'm doing a double Gong Dao Bay temperature reduction. And then pouring on the edge to just try to take the temperature down a bit. I mean, I tend to brew hotter than I would normally recommend when I'm doing these um, samplings because obviously you want to just really try to get a good feel for the tea um, and that means that you need to um, brew it a little bit hotter. I, I just know this tea is going to be so mega. I just, I can feel it. I can feel it in my fingers, people. Uh, yes, um, welcome Roger. Um, we are drinking six different teas from Sichuan, three yellows, three greens, just come in um, and we shall see what they're like, but they are looking very, very high end, I have to say. And I am, I've got high hopes for these. Another thing that I'm looking for regarding green teas is I don't want too much color. I want lots of activity. Oh, that's good. What happened there? I want lots of activity. Can you see that? Super active, but I don't want it to be too saturated in terms of color. Generally, that means better tea. Less color generally means better tea with greens. I'm gonna smell these wet leaves now. Oh my gosh, it is just spot on. Um, I'm getting now some minerality, some slate, some chalk. I'm getting fruits, I'm getting elderflower. I'm getting a little bit of um, uh, grapefruit. Yeah, um, something else. A little chicken soupiness as well. Stella, Stella, Stella tea. Here we go. Love it. 
Love it. Texture is so thick. Texture is like, is, is as thick as the thickest of pu'ers. Um, taste is, is smooth and rounded and rich. Oh, love it. Love it. The sweetness in my mouth is next level. Sweet dew. It is just like agave or melon, like a melon, like a honeydew melon sweetness. A little bit of um, dill as well. Oh, damn, I know this, this is going to be expensive. Damn, I know this is going to be expensive. Oh, I want it. I need it. Is it going to be out of our price range? Oh my gosh, this is spectacular tea. Oh, Mick Pock, Mike Pock says, what creates texture body and tea? A lot of it is to do with the trichome, so the buddy hairy material um, on, the, on the buds that, that strip off when you brew and it adds thickness. But there is also just a natural sort of thickness in the, in the actual extraction that comes. Um, there is um, some pectin, pectin is released, saponins, they all come out and that is also part of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want too much color and it goes black. I get it. Um, some of the Longjing prices blew my hair back. Well, three, two and a half, three thousand dollars for 10 grams. That's where we're, that's what we're currently, um, is, is in my head right now. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of an insane one. Uh, try terpene glycosides here. Well, possibly. I'll, I'll take your word for it, Marco. Um, I'm going to brew this up one more time. Um, I will say to you right now that this gets... This gets so many ticks. Um, it's uh, definitely shortlisted. Um, it's a question of, you know, you know, is it going to be too expensive? My guess is it is going to be eye-watering. Um, and I could sort of see that from the, from the look of the leaves. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, this is the thing about, about um, green teas. Um, they, they range in price radically um, from being very, very affordable, even true teas, like good teas, very, very affordable, to somewhere in the region of $1,000 for 250 grams. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's common. Um, and so... You know, you've got to um, weigh it all up. A lot of it is due to area, um, due to origin, obviously due to rarity. A lot of it is due to the name, so you've got to be careful if it's, if it's just about the name. Um, you know, I wonder, I'm so curious about these 18 bushes because it is like, obviously they are the most famous bushes in the world. Um, and so like to get to try it, I would like to know how much different, and it's obviously not going to be worth two thousand five hundred dollars for 10 grams right but how much better might it be i don't know um hokui tends to normally come a bit later so i'm not like hokui is not quite on our radar quite just yet but it comes up normally a bit later angie by chad definitely is a is a pricey tea um i've never heard of the 18 bushes so these are the 18 imperial bushes that were sort of decreed by the emperor to, you know, be the best teas. Um, and uh, I think maybe Qing Dynasty. Um, and uh, they're in um, Lion's Head Field in Westlake. And it is, um, you know, they're legendary. Now, are they the original 18? Have they been changed? Uh, I hope not, but you know, it's, a, it's something to always question. Let's see, another brew of this, Stella, 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 Gunlu, <clears throat> and I'm going to be interested to see how this compares to the second Gunlu. Oh, 
Yes. It's got that quality of, of Angie Bai Cha, the sort of um, milky nuttiness of an Angie Bai Cha. Uh, like raw almonds um, and, it, and this savory um, zucchini, courgette zucchini, uh, like the, the inside, that creamy inside um, cooked in like a dashi. It's amazing. Oh, so good. Okay, so I'm going to now try the second gamlu. It even has a slight little long jing uh, toasted bean note to it too. Uh, Claire's asking, will you start tasting Japanese green teas too? No, uh, it's not going to be for a while. Um, Jap Japan is always later. Um, we're, probably, we're probably talking about um, end of April, um, beginning of May, something like that. All right. Ganlu number two. The look of this Ganlu is different. Um, I will show it to you. Let's see if I can get it in focus. Come on. Looks a bit more, a little bit less wispy, a little bit more sort of um, whole together, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, Shincha just started free dropping and most of the still pre-orders. Yeah, it's going to be mostly pre-order for Shincha. Okay, so let's uh, give this, ooh, I poured that in and I got this cloud of trichomes popping out from the guy one. Let's see, I don't know anything about it. Different producer, maybe probably different producer, well, almost certainly different producer. So let's see. <laughs> Mega smell. Same, same, lots of shortbread. Biscuity, incredible. Um, slightly more elderflower and fruit though in this one. Yeah, slightly more elderflower fruit. Uh, Roger asks, hey, I'm going on a family trip soon to Aruba and was wondering what your experience is with getting tea on and off on planes. I never have any problems uh, with tea. Um, they will usually stop it if it's in the hand luggage and look because they'll think it's cannabis or something. Uh, but once you show them that it's tea, it's okay. Um, and even like if you put it in pouches and it's unmarked, you know, they can see that it's not anything untoward except high quality brews. Have you tasted any American bushes in Vegas? Nice one, Theo. All right, <clears throat> let's give this a brew. And already a great sign is I'm getting this, these, this lovely uh, refreshing sweat developing on my forehead, warming. That tea has got incredible uh, oomph to it. Oh, so good. I mean, that is Gan Lu at its peak. Okay. Leave that lid off. I'm sure Celine will want to try it. Okay. Gan Lu number two. Even lighter. Even lighter. So we've got another high quality beaut here. It's uh, hard to focus on this camera, but you can hopefully see that it is trichomy and light. Yes, for those of you, you've heard Mishkin. Mishkin has heard Celine, and therefore all the clues are that she is coming very, very soon. Um, I just put my biggest order on Mayleaf, 350 euros. Thank you, D. Gutterston. Lots of different kinds and larger amounts of my favorite was Matha Sulong. Contribution to the uh, $2,500 uh, 10 gram sample. I mean, look, you know what? It's that kind of thing, isn't it? If we had enough subscribers that like we could like splurge it, know we could do a video about it and make some money back on it just through the YouTube, then it would be good because I know I can't sell it. But you know, hey. <sighs> if you're not subscribed, that was your cue, by the way, to go subscribe and hit the like, you know, there you go. Did, did the duty. Cheers, everybody. Sample number two. 
different, different. Um, hmm, different, how to describe it. Just as thick, um, just as uh, rich, more in the nuts and sweetness, like almost like candied almonds, um, very sweet, sweeter than the first one, but less brothiness. So instantly, like it's, it's, it's one of those situations where they're both very high quality, um, but in different ways. <laughs> what does the bell do? I hope, thank you for the prompt. Uh, the bell allows you to be notified when we release a video. So you get a notification on your email, I guess. Um, but very important, a lot of people don't know this. Not very important, but I'll sell it to you anyway. Even if you push the bell, you've also got to go into the settings of YouTube and allow notifications because we've looked at the stats and whilst there are quite a few people that have allowed for the bell, have clicked the bell, most of them have not allowed for notifications, so it's a kind of pointless bell. Anyway, um, don't get me wrong, Marco, this is still brothy. It's still brothy, but it's less brothy than the first one, but more like in your face sweet and nutty. So, so good. Such a great uh, Ganlu. I'm gonna even suggest Judging by this, the, the clarity of that sweetness and nuttiness, that this may even be more expensive. And also the look is a little bit, hello. Hi. Oh my gosh, you are, did you fall asleep? I had to put makeup on because I, <laughs> I was having a proper annoyance upstairs. Was she just not going to sleep? Oh my goodness. It's like the moment I said to her, we're working tonight, like you got to go to sleep. She's like, nah, mate, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like literally, she's just looking at her hands going, la, 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 for like an hour and a half. Uh, move up. Freaking almost lost it. I, I can sense your, like, Bye, Beth. <laughs> your <laughs> annoyance. <laughs> I can't <hurt. clears throat> Okay, drink some greens. Yeah. Some really mega greens. We've All got right. two, um, two sweet dews here. Sweet dew. Both of them are, well, I think both of them are excellent. Okay. And uh, shrug off the Cheers. annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> mm. She's going to get a full s session. We've got, we've got four more teas to try. No sweat. Great tea, no? It's really good. And then this is the second one. So you tell me which one it's you It's kind prefer. of weird that it was like creamy, but it has um, a baby leaf cooling sweetness and mm. like greenness. <laughs> a baby leaf cooling sweetness. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that herbaceous. I said herbaceous. dill, which dill. is kind of there. <coughs> Queen Celine, maker of art and tamer of wild beasts. <laughs> And that's no. that's quite a good uh, quite a good Game of Thrones style mm. uh, name for yourself. Okay. Smells like candy floss. Smell that. It's amazing. Oh yeah. This one was sweeter. Second one was sweeter. Yeah. yeah. This one was sweeter and just as creamy as the first one, but just sweeter. Mm. Yeah. It's like what is that? I don't know. I can't think. It's of got a like look. quite a little bit of a green quill quality. The second infusion as well. Oh yeah. Elderflower. Actually, yeah. I mean, it, it it is a mega uh, sweet to you. Both oh. of these are top draw, top top draw, uh, um, sweet juice, and I love them both, but in different ways. Mm. This one is sweeter and more in a way mm. nuttier and and yeah. and, and, and like. But like blanched nuts. Yeah, or and, and in a way sort of creamier. This, uh, mm. sorry, cleaner. This yeah. one here is very, very brothy. You only taste like the dregs. Right. It's more brothy. Really? Um, so we'll, we'll do a double. Well, I'll let you taste the it's third. It's all right. No, you need no, to no, move no, on. No, no, no. Taste the third <laughs> infusion. Very, very important because, you know, selecting this tea is going to be, going to be difficult. But the problem is I think that they're going to be pricey as that's the uh, issue. Yeah. Especially that second one. I don't know. It's that second one. some really good. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, brothy, but still 
not as umami as like Japanese green tea. You know, it's like more floral, brighter. Yeah. yeah. But taste a third infusion of this. Okay. The color is just supreme. It's exactly what I want. <clears throat> right. So how is everybody? Everybody good? <laughs> yeah, I think they're all doing well. Good. It's nice. It's nice to be back. Nice to be back and uh, hanging out with 177 of you. Lovely to see you. Cheers. Oh, you know what I mean? This has got a bit more punch to it. Mm. But I like it. It's got like that uh, bamboo saber yeah. flavor. Yeah. But then a creamy kind of blanched. It's not almond. Uh, blanched. Chestnut? Mm, interesting. Yeah. Boiled chestnuts. Yeah. Perhaps, yeah. That's why I said it reminded me a little bit of Long Jing in a way. Yeah. That sort of chestnutty, nutty no note. Mm. For sure. That is mm. a good note. It is a great tea as well. That's so much better than that infusion that you gave me. I know. I know. Uh, and, and. Okay, that's hard different. to choose. It's now. different. Yeah. Very different. That one's got yeah. a bit more punch. Yeah. That one's got the most amount. The second one has the most amount of like elegance. Yeah. I'm going to guess that that one's the more expensive yeah. one but that doesn't mean that that one's not yeah just as good if not that's quite moorish that one yeah exactly actually. um apparently i appear more like a dog person i've never had a dog i've never had a dog i wish i had a dog <laughs> she's the dog person yeah i'm quite a dog person. um i actually you know i've always had cats but that's just because of the family i do really love the idea of having a dog however when i had an experience of looking after a dog it was a bit of a disaster which i think i've yeah. spoken about on previous lives you um, failed. i failed quite miserably um and so um yeah nobody's ever letting me look after their dog again <laughs> since then everyone has found out don is terrible with dogs i apparently have a jinx with dogs and i um, even though not. you tried you tried I tried it very hard all right so Two amazing teas to start off with. We're going to find out about them a little bit later. Now we are moving on to one of the pains in my butt. Oh, is that the ones coming here? No. Yes. Now we are going to be talking about... I'll tell you about the dog incident a bit later if you, if you really... Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you about that? It's a long story. Um, if, if I didn't say it, then I will. But let me know. Maybe some of you forgot. Right. Mm. The pain in my butt is this. Ooh. <laughs> See, <laughs> can't even well. pour it properly. You're like, I hate it so much. Bamboo so Sabre. Much. Bamboo yeah. Sabre is a tea which everyone wants to get, but everyone I try is not good enough because it seems to me that the trend in Sichuan is to make Bamboo Sabre extremely green. And will you please focus, please, um, extremely green and extremely raw. And it seems like that's the look and the trend, which I disagree with on many levels. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think it's a trend. I think it's a bad trend uh, that has happened where people are going, oh, let's do fresh, let's do fresh, let's do fresh. And they've taken away the whole point of green teas, which is nourishment, nutrition, broth, all of those things. So I need there to be warmth um, in this, and we shall see. Let's have a sniff of the leaves, which I didn't warm up, uh, the guy one, but <laughs> buds smell pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Um, now, listen, if you like that very bright, very green uh, bamboo sabers, mm. then, you know, enjoy mm. i personally don't i find that yes you can brew them cool and you can get some nice brews but i want the warmth man i need some warmth man <laughs> you're like i've missed the sun i'm gonna get warmth in my tea you know, wherever i can get it a lot of people make this uh, sort of association that spring teas should be fresh and green yeah and i just don't agree with it like there needs to be some some brightness, there needs to be some greenness, but it can't taste raw. Uh, Darren has got it spot on. We need trend police. This is the thing, problem with trends, you know? 
problem with trends. Like it's like when you go to visit a trendy restaurant, yeah. you know, and you queue up for ages and go, well, it's meant to be the best blah, 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 X in the whole of the city. Mm. And then you eat it and you're like, everyone else is taking pictures of it. And they're like, ah, and they're like, I'm here at this place, la, 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 la. Isn't it? How many times yeah. has that happened to us? So and then we eat and we go, but Wait, am it's I not that good. Am I pouring though? Go for it. Okay. I don't know. I was like, are you leaving it strong for on purpose? Nice leaf there. Nice little leaf. Yeah. Have a schniff. Sorry, you were saying. No, that was it. I said it. <laughs> oh, true, now though. this though is different. Mm. This is, it's got the green. It's got the freshness. Marco, I am, I'm not talking Ooh. about like having no freshness, but it needs to be balanced. It can't just be like having raw leaf. That has freshness, but like also mm, a sappy. Mm. Scott's got it. If trend police, maybe no aged white tea. Yeah, look, all for trying new things and for trends and for, you know, all for that. But when the trend overtakes the market, and overtakes the tradition, then I feel like we've got a bit of a problem, in my opinion. Um, I like it umami, exactly. Right. Oh, that's like elderflower and steamed artichoke hot. And a bit of edamame. Yeah. A lot of edamame. Yeah, a lot of edamame, actually. That's All good. right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if this Jiu Ching hits the mark. We've tasted about six or seven Jiu Chings so far this year. None of them, none of them are good enough. Wow. Wow, so fresh. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like a breeze in a field of rice plants. Yeah. And you're really low down and you're just getting hit yeah. with that. You so so yeah. this is definitely the best Juya Ching that I've tried this year because it has that ricey, starchy mm. quality to it. Yeah. That nourishment. It still has a little bit too much of that. I actually think compared to a lot of them. Oh yeah. This, this is just a bit better. I think this yeah. is better. I think yeah. it's substantially better. Yeah. Um, that edamame is like the giveaway. It's like more warm, right? More mm. warm, creamy greenness rather than like raw leaf greenness. I just wonder. But it still hits a little bit hard in terms of its. I know you're talking about brews, aren't you? Uh, no, yeah. Like I wonder as as it goes on, like more infusions, if it's gonna be more like sharp green. Let's see. Yeah. I'm brewing at 85, so I would not normally brew this at that temperature, right? I would brew it, yeah. brew it a bit cooler and for longer. So, you know, we'll see. It might That's be not the, bad for 85. Yeah, for 85, degrees. I'm yeah. actually quite, and the, the aftertaste is, is juicy. Yeah. Like an Asian pear oh, juiciness, yeah, good you one. know? Yeah, um, yeah. I like it. Um, I, it's growing on me, but I'm going to brew it at a little bit cooler. And see what it does. This is definitely the best Jiu Ching I've tasted this year. For sure. Oh, aloe vera. Yeah, it has a bit of aloe vera note to it. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. Without the sourness. Without the sourness, yeah. Yeah, a little cactus. Yeah, a little cactus. cactusy mm. note to it. A bit of a succulent. A bit succulent. Um, Yes, we are tasting bamboo saber, and there may be a dog story in the offing. Okay, you want the dog story? Uh, I'll give you the the the, the part never, one of the dog story. You never said the dog. I story? think I did because yeah. we talked about the ghost, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, true. Um, but the, the the dog story is I have a really good friend, one of my best friends, Martin. He had a dog um, who. Um, sorry, just one one yeah. second. Any yeah. chance that there will be a tea after dark around the third of May? I'm probably in London. Uh, possibly, I think the next one's April. Oh, the next one is in May somewhere, sometime. Or it's late April. You might just miss it. Mm. Um, so, Fred, one of my best friends um, was going away to a uh, safari in Kenya, I think, and uh, asked me to look after his dog. Uh, I said yes, because I, I love his dog. Um, and... Um, he came, dropped off his dog, and then left, went straight to the airport. And then um, um, I was like really happy because I had a dog. It's like, yeah, I've got a dog. And I was sitting outside in my garden throwing like a tennis ball 
for the dog to go and uh, um, Right. And so I was like, oh no. And I could see that she wasn't walking properly. And I immediately tried to call my friend, but he had already like just literally um, flow, uh, flew. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Uh, and uh, is it buffering? Are you okay? Are we okay? Or are we buffering? We are losing him. Anyone else glitching? Here we go. Let the gremlins begin. Ay, 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 ay. Uh oh. Glitchy? Is it glitchy? Well, I don't really know what to do because if it's just glitching on video, uh. YouTube's not. Ooh la la, Michigan, hair everywhere. Oh yes, uh, the audio delayed. Ah uh, man, come on, man. Ooh. Is it working now? Okay, let's see. Might have just been one of those little things. Anyway, so long story short, basically I freaked out, didn't know what to do. And so I was like, you know, I need to find the vet. I tried, but I didn't know who the vet was for this dog. Um, and it was like doing my head. I didn't know what to do. I put some um, the anti-inflammatory on the uh, dog's leg. Um, and um, then like about an hour later, the dog went outside, started he started eating grass and I was like why are you eating grass and I looked online and it says dogs will eat grass if they've been poisoned <laughs> and I was like so what bad. and then I was looked up and I looked up <laughs> diclofenac which is anti-inflammatory and apparently that's poisonous to dogs so broke leg poisoned dog um, and then I had to go to work the next day and um, then uh, I left the dog with my mother and my mother how is it by the it's way it's really good what did your mother do again my mother was like looking after the dog. She loved the dog so much and she felt so sorry for him, for her. And then I came back home from work and immediately like the dog was freaking out, wanted to go into the garden, eating grass. I was like, what happened? Did you feed the dog anything? I just gave her some chocolate as a treat. I was like, oh, even I know no. you can't give chocolate to a dog. <laughs> oh, no. So poisoned three, uh, so broken leg, poisoned twice. Is bad. Um, and, uh, and she said, but I gave him a very high quality dark chocolate. I'm like, that's the it worst. <laughs> so the dog, the dog literally was injured just by jumping, chasing for a ball. It was like only about that high yeah. she jumped from, but on like, she landed on some like wet tiles and it just, it was just one of those random slips. That is... And it, and it, and it basically broke the leg. Um, and then I was freaking <laughs> out. I had brought, I brought the dog to a local vet. I was trying to get hold of my friend. This was, sort of around the time of mobile phones, but not roaming. So like he was in Kenya on safari. I had no idea how to get hold of him. I couldn't find the vet. So I brought him to a brought her to a local vet. The vet basically kept her in and did the whole x-ray thing. And then she came back like all sedated and like Poor screaming thing. and stuff like when she woke up. It was horrible, 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 horrible. <laughs> Traumatic. And then, um, and then the vet was saying like you, the, the leg is, or the knee was broken or something. Um, and she needs an operation right now, right now. Otherwise it's gonna, you know, like it's gonna be a problem and it's gonna cost like 3000 pounds or something. I was just like, uh, I don't know what to do. Like it's not yeah, my it's dog, not, dog, not yeah. you know, not the dog's vet, freaking out. So then I, I tried to get hold of his ex-wife and his ex-wife thankfully knew the vet. So then I called up the, the, the dog's real vet and the dog's real vet said, you know, I need to get the x-rays from your vet. And then the vet basically said, no, I'm not giving you our extras. And I'm like, but I paid for it. Yeah. So it was a whole argument with the vet. I had to pay them more money. It was That's a mess. Rude. Anyway, gave, it, gave the, the, the x-rays to the, to the authentic vet. And that vet said, yes, she does need an operation, but you can wait until your friend is back. It's not gonna be, the, 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 not gonna be a, a problem. Um, and I left wow. so many messages on, on his phone. And then he called me up when he landed. And I was like, Martin. And the first thing he said to me was like, is she dead? <laughs> um, and, uh, and I said, no, she's not, but badly injured. And then obviously, you know, he took her and like, he, he spent lots of money on fixing her and then having rehabilitation in the swimming pool. Oh, it was like this cool. epic long thing. And I felt 
terrible. And yes, Sia, this is the same dog as the ghost in the warehouse story because he stupidly said like a year later, look, second time you can do it now. Here's the dog, I'm going away. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah. And then I was like, okay. Uh, So I was like, really like, I was like, so careful with her, right? And I took it everywhere. (laughs) And I brought her to the warehouse, the tea warehouse, and like, you know, shut all the doors and everything and was talking to my team and she had disappeared. Disappeared, (laughs) I couldn't, I called her, she wasn't coming, she always comes. And she just, she was, she had gone. And I was freaking out and then I saw a little hole in the door, like in the, like the warehouse has like this shutter, Mm -hmm. right? And it was slightly open. I thought, oh my God, she's gone. And I went out into the street, fully expecting to see her like lifeless body, like on the road. Um, But uh, she wasn't there. I didn't know what was happening. We looked everywhere for like 10 minutes. We were screaming for her. And then someone found her basically lost in a corridor of teaware, staring at a ghost, what we assume is a ghost. Um, And basically like transfixed. And I had to like pick her up and take her away um, <laughs> and so thinking. and so at that point I swore I will never look after another dog again uh, there you go story this tea is really good so has anyone said hey Don can you look after my dog and you're like listen no <laughs> it's not it's not a good idea no one's asked you yeah no no one's asked me and if they did I would say no you don't want to I would tell them the story and they'd go okay fair enough yeah um it was, it was not fun. All that fun I was hoping to have with the dog. Uh, <laughs> Marco, naughty. Nothing peanut butter can't fix. Naughty boy. Uh, you both have such a rich taste and smell. Very Do you make a conscious effort to remember tastes and smells with food to use as reference for tea or does it just come instantly? No, I do make a conscious choice. I make a conscious choice to taste and try to store the taste, especially, well, with all tastes, but especially if I think it might have a food, uh, uh, a tea reference. Do dogs like peanut butter? <laughs> Do they not? Do Marco they? is leading you, leading us into an area yeah. that is rude. And I don't want to go there because my, I'm trying to keep oh, this okay. family friendly, but I will tell you afterwards. Okay, that's good. About the peanut <laughs> I'm butter. I'm very confused. I was like just imagining a dog like being treated with peanut butter. Still don't get it. They are treated with peanut butter, but then the owner is treated as well. No, that's not what he meant. No. That's what he meant. No. That is what he meant. (laughs) From such a simple phrase, nothing peanut butter can't fix. Like, what? (laughs) Okay. I mean, I'm assuming, maybe it's my dirty, dirty mind, but that's what I'm assuming. Um, yeah, it's just you. Too. Yeah, well, why, you. why is everyone talking about peanut butter? Uh, did I miss your recap of the Sedona and Canyon? Uh, yeah, basically, we went to the Grand Canyon. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Stunning. Beautiful. Like, as, like... Like, mind-blowing. Uh, mind-blowing. I like, mean, especially when you everything think about... Everything you would expect. That was all underwater. I keep going Incredible. on about it. All underwater. Like, how it makes all these... Rich... And it's so far down. It actually makes me scared to go in the sea <laughs> more. Yeah, the depth Since having it. seen the Grand Canyon, Stunning. I'm Stunning. Like, Jaw dropping. Yeah. The word awesome is overused, but awesome. Yeah, it's more than that. No, but like if you actually it's think what awesome actually is, like it literally awesome. leaves you in awe. Like yeah. you're like, oh, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, amazing. Can people walk down there? You can get a helicopter down. I'll be, oh, wow. Yeah, we didn't do the helicopter. I wonder if people climb down. Probably, yeah. Mm. Amazing. And then Sedona was so stunningly beautiful. Bougie, but beautiful. Very bougie. I did think quite pricey. And like, feels like a lot of LA people there. A lot of people, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, you can imagine you know, it's a, 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 a this place for. Zen, crystal, healing. Yeah. Which is beautiful. The vortexes which is great. and stuff. But, it, but, but the landscape is stunning. The landscape is It is amazing. absolutely stunning. Yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't do many of the like hikes because of Aya. Because I would have liked to have done a proper she was long. Quite into it, though. She was into it, but yeah. that was a short hike, yeah, right? It was a short, short hike. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it amazing. Sedona is beautiful for sure. I mean, listen, 
the people in the US, you've got yeah, such so a luxury, lucky. especially in that part of the world, but I guess in other parts of just the most amazing landscape. So, yeah. I mean, it is. It's stunning. It's everything. You've got it's, everything. The, 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 the space, the skies, the clouds, mm. just gorgeous. Mm. Like, gorgeous. Love it. Yeah. Um, any tips for Madrid? Um, eat and eat and eat. Madrid. Yeah, but that's what we do. I mean, we just tend to eat, but that's... I didn't tea see... Uh, I don't know about tea in Madrid. Oh. Oh. Um, tea and food related. Food Sorry, and related. Well, what, did you, what do you remember? I remember a lot of tapas, a lot of octopus yeah. and a Wasn't lot of... Wasn't that like, market? The, yeah, the right? market, the central market there is really nice. Um, that put, that pig, that suckling pig, with the, they cut it with the plates. What do you think of it? That was delicious. It was good. It was an experience. But I think we had so much meat that day that it was yeah. really like... You know... Like, it's been a while though it's been a while yeah. since i've since i've good, been to madrid good food in general i don't think you can go wrong really well you can I did, I did, well i did quite like the beer and the yeah the little tapasy yeah things. and you know but the problem is that madrid is heavy the food is heavy yeah, right heavy. and so like after a while there's only so much sort of cracked eggs on and ham on yeah, on yeah, yeah, chips yeah. you can eat True. before you like and that True. that that dish with all the beans or was it the beans Oh, that really heavy. that was yeah. heavy 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 maybe bring I like some, heavy food but bring some ripe poor and green tea bring lots of ripe poor for sure but like the green tea to like refresh your palate a bit because <laughs> I felt like there wasn't enough veggie going on there yeah true you need a bit of refreshing salady thing yeah I know that it was an eclipse in the US um we were like obviously <gasps> yeah. we were there and everyone was sort of prepping for it and then we came back um, so I hope you enjoyed the eclipse. I saw somewhere people taking videos of like the floor when there was the eclipse with like um, like beautiful patterns that look like half moons. Oh really? Not half moons, like little eclipse. What eclipse because of the round. eclipse? Yeah. It's like yeah, they're seeing it on the floor. It looked crazy. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, yeah, it's. Um, it was, um, unfortunately, we just missed it. We would, I would have loved to yeah. have seen it. Um, right. So I actually think that this tea is growing on me. I think that the colder, cooler infusions mm. were, were very, like, good balance. I actually think this is, is the first Jia Qing that is in the shortlist. I'm going to have to sample it a little bit more um, at different brewing parameters. But I do think it is really a very high it. quality tea. Yeah, yeah. I am very much liking it. So, so far, we have got... That is really good. Three winners, because to be on the shortlist, um, usually that's a ten percenter. Usually, ten percent of what we try gets on the shortlist, and currently we're at a hundred percent, which is a bit nuts. So I, and as I said, I, I think I know the source. It has the taste of like what um, you know how you hear the sour apple candies, but if you imagine a melon candy instead, it has a bit of that taste, that tea. Melon yeah. candy. Melon, yeah. melon um, yeah. uh, sour candies. It's not sour, but it has that... Melony. Of, yeah, melony and kind of refreshing yeah, thing melony, going on. Yeah, melony, ca candied melons, yeah. yeah. Um, Marco says, needing cold water is a defect. It wasn't cold. It was like 75 degrees. Um, I think at 85 degrees, it was still nice. So it's not like... I. I know what you're saying, and I agree with you to a point, but there is, there is especially with Julia Ching, there is a sweet spot um, that you need to reach. And so, like, you know, it's a, it would be a bit unfair to just brew it at 85 without testing it at a cooler temperature. And I think that at the cooler temperature, it really does work. So 75, but maybe for a minute infusion, is probably the way to go. Um, right. Oh, oof. sorry, I'm smelling them again. Yeah, go for it. And what about this one? Oh, good. Someone asked, um, uh, oh, how old were you? Oh my when you... gosh. What? That's insane. It's like lemonade. I know, I know, I know. It's crazy. Uh, someone asked, what, how old were you when you first drank tea? I was intrigued by that question. I don't know. It would have been like a builder's brew. I was probably about eight, nine <laughs> would be my guess, but That's I can't true. say for sure. That smell is insane. That smell is like yeah. Sprite or like 7-Up or something. Yeah, big time. Exactly. Amazing. <clears throat> um, right, let's let's move on to yellow teas, and we've got three yellow teas here. Should we brew them all together, or should we brew them one by one? I think we should brew them all together. All right. I kind of want to. 
Right, let me get some more water in. Side-by-side tastings going on. Um, are we getting any more woozy? We're getting some other Tianjian coming ah, in. For those okay. of you who want to know, we have found some really good. Uh, is that the one I did the artwork for? Yes, it, it oh. is. <laughs> Correct, Mundo. I forget. She's already done the artwork for it. Um, so what we have now is Sovereign Bud. Sovereign Bud was one of my teas of the year last year. Was it last year? It was last yeah, year. I think it was we last only year. got a tiny amount, and it went like this. Um, this is Mengding Huangya, uh, Mengding Yellow Bud, and it is just if a Sovereign Bud is good, mm. it is. For me, like the top of the pile for yellow teas. Well, are we taste? I don't see any yellow teas. These yet. are yellow teas. What? Yes, indeed. Oh my goodness. Those are sovereign buds. I'm guessing. Does yellow tea age well? I don't know. I've never really tried it, but I would suggest not, would be my guess. Easy, easy. Hmm? I would suggest not. Um, I, I, I kind of think that. It's, uh, it's probably similar to green and that it won't age that well, but maybe try it out, see what you think. Um, all right, any other questions while that kettle is um, heating up? Any other questions you wanna fire at us? Um, as I said, we have found Silver Needle this year. We found uh, Imperial Green, Longjing Supreme. We found oh, Jade Arrow Supreme. Uh, I still haven't found our classic Jade Arrow yet, so I'm sort of Ooh. hoping that that comes. Yeah. Um, with new samples. Um, what else? Uh, we've got a Dan Song from this year, which is unusual to have an early Dan Song. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Mm. How old were you when you first had Gong Fu style tea, Celine? You know what? In Hong Kong, they always have tea with, um, with uh, dim sum. So I feel like I probably had it quite early on, but not Gong Fu style. It was always big pot and like, mm, yeah. you know. So Gong Fu style, I think it was at Maylis. <laughs> oh, really? China Life, China so, Life. Yeah. So that would have been 2008, yeah. probably. Yeah. Are you making a new Simple Dreams? Yes, we're trying to find the child. <laughs> yes, I'm That sounds so, so creepy. We're looking for a child. Okay. So we're talking to um, friends to find out like, you know, which yeah. child is going to be on the cover. If they want, if want, if they our, want that. our friend's child on there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've done two girls. I've done Ayana and her best friend so far. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like a, a little boy. A little boy would be good. Yeah. Uh, young Gushu 2024. Um, not sampling uh, Gushus just yet. They're probably coming next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, why are black and white tea similar? Good question. Um, essentially, what you what you have to recognize is that both black and white teas are unheated. Generally, they're not they're not pan fried. Whoopsie. Um, and so that means that the there is a warmth and oxidation level which is very similar. And oxidation level is different, but the but white tea is oxidized much more than green teas or green tea guanyins, etc. And so um, yeah, that's the reason. There you go. Um, there you go. Uh, Incredible says, I've gotten two orders from you now and I've not been disappointed. Your teas are amazing. I really like Candy Ice Crunch. Any other recommendations based on that? Lush Disciple. I will just, whenever you rec whenever you ask me for any recommendation for <gasps> ah raw poor. Mayhem. What happened? Uh, it had water in it. I forgot. It's all right. That's cool. That's no, cool. I it's cool. Understand. Just give the others a rinse and then we're good. Okay. Um, mm, not in the same yeah, if anyone asks me for recommendations for raw pu'er in the next two months, you will get the same reply. Lush Disciple. <laughs> Lush, Lush Disciple. Lush Disciple. You're obsessed with I'm it. obsessed with that tea. I am obsessed with that tea. Um, video of that is coming out on the weekend, as you suspect. Um, for those of you who have already picked it up, because obviously for the tea slingers, we, uh, I tried to get it online today um, and succeeded. Um, so it's available. It is everything. Um, Ayana is on uh, Simple Dreams 1 and her friend Emmy is on Simple Dreams 2. So we shall find out about Simple Dreams 3. 
Uh, Kimberly loves the cover for Lush Disciple. Oh, thank you. It is a great cover. I love it too. Um, what's up with that T Rogers saying? Sneak peek. Oh. Sneak peek is after we smell these. Oh, different, different, different. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Wow, they're so different to each other. Oh, I like different. Different is good. It's like... Oh my gosh. This, I mean, I'll let you smell first. No, you tell me. No, no, no. You smell. You smell. Oh, different. Yeah. <laughs> that one is yeah. different. <clears throat> oh, wow. Different, different. Different, different. Huh. Yeah, I find that this one's the most floral, like... Um, I'm not going to say creamy again. Nutty... Custody scent to it. Nutty custody. So I'm looking at the comments and yeah. apparently Sia says we need to make another baby for Th Simple Dreams 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much is there for Lush Disciple? Um, I can't recall. I think about 500, 400 cakes is like a guess. So not a massive amount, but not like ridiculous. Okay, this is way more on the on the roasted vegetable notes. Mm -hmm, yeah, like roasted asparagus, artichoke again. I keep getting artichoke, and then yeah. there's like, but there is a sweet. Yeah. What is it? Like a like a simple honey glaze on it or something. On those vegetables, and then this one. Ooh, this is like in between the two. They're but just so different. It's got a bit of a caramel note, which is kind of weird. Yeah, exactly. So like for me, this has got a bit more caramel. of a sweet caramel yeah. toffee note, and I really like toffee, it. Toffee, yeah. This one has, like you say, slightly... Um, uh, almost like a little bit like a mole, like dark chocolate with some roasted vegetables. Um, yeah. And this Big one is time. the most brothy, but with that elderflower florality. And, and, and just judging by the smell, I would say that um, these two are my, my preferred, but I'll yeah. be interested to see how that yeah. develops. Go so for it. For a am month. I, uh, uh, are you putting a timer? No. no. Ready? Go. Go. Timer is on. Okay. How ten, long are you? ten seconds difference. I'll tell you when to do the next one. And go. What temperature did you do? Uh, it's about eighty. Oh, okay. Don't don't we do? Isn't it seventy five? Yeah, it's a bit. I always brew a bit hotter. Oh, okay. Uh, testing and it, go. Testing it. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> so, Sovereign Bud, as I said, it came and went in like a week last time we got it in That's so much. because it was so small yeah. batch. So hopefully one as good here. And if so, I will just try to get as much as I can. Um, but we shall see. Yeah. <clears throat> just generate up an AI baby, says Marco pa Paolo. We don't do yeah, that, man. Yeah, that feels wrong, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite nice to have like, Actual people on a cover. Actual people, real people. Yeah. Why is it that we're always squished to one side? Yeah. Oops. Oops. Um, Maybe that's why. Because you got so much stuff on that side. Why don't you move them? Give it to me. That's true. That's fine. That's fine. Look, I've got All so good. much space here. All good. All that. All right. So we've got three sovereign buds. Any other questions out there? Please tell me. Tell me the dog you trust. What's that? Please tell me the dog you trust. Not quite sure what that means. What's the difference between silver and yixing teapots? Very different. Silver is silver, yixing is clay, and the, the, the difference <laughs> yeah. in the effect is clay has much more of a softening, rounding, thickening effect. Mm -hmm. a silver is a more, um, yes, go. Um, pour yeah. It. yeah, pour it. Brighter, more vibrant, but still has has like a, a slight reduction in astringency, yep. But I definitely think that um, the clay is more to my taste than silver. We are sampling silver, by the way. I've got some silver pots that I've, are coming over from China for us to sample. So I'll see. 
I'll see. Um, is the 2024 limited design guy ones in the works yet? That's something we keep forgetting about, isn't it? Ah, oh, yeah. I Damn. actually, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to working oh, on that. that drawing you did recently um, with the guy one. Mm, the one the that splash. we're going to put on our labels. Yeah, but is that enough? It might be. I think it's good. Anyway, I'll work on it. Okay. Andrew is asking, could you talk about naming conventions for tea? I understand the difference, but getting confused with English names like Dragon Well and then class it belongs to. This is a very good question, um, and I have done a video about it, which will go into much greater detail. So search for something like tea names or something, and you'll probably find out. Um, the problem is that tea names don't have any sort of rules. If you go to, to India, you'll have this STF, GOPs and stuff like that. So that sort of refers to um, the, the, the picking style. Um, you get picking style also in China with Bai Mudan and, and uh, Yinjian, etc. cetera. Um, so that may, may be part of it. You'll also get origin being thrown in. So, you know, um, Longjing, um, well, like Dragon Well, etc. It's like it, there, there's certain origin names which are applied, but that doesn't mean that the T actually has to come from that origin. It's just sort of referring to the original from that origin. So it's again confusing. There is cultivar being thrown in, like Jin Xuan and Qing Xin, um, especially in places like Taiwan, but also for Yencha, like Rogue and uh, and uh, and other type uh, other 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 cultivars. Uh, then there are other names um, like Jin Jin Mei and and you know, names that are just names that have been created um, for the tea. Um, there are um, names around the shape of the tea, like Mao Feng, Mao Jian. These are all related to the shape of the finished tea. Um, there are names that are related to the, um, as I said, the origin or the village, like Bulang or, you know, Da Shui Shan, et cetera. Um, there's all sorts, and there's sort of these umbrella groups of like Da Hong Pao. What does that mean? It, mean? it doesn't really mean anything. It's not cultivar. It's not area, but mm. like it's sort of understand. It's a style of tea, like an umbrella. Mm. So it is basically a free for all, and that's the problem. And that's why it's difficult to like learn it. But you will after some time. Um, right? Um, would it be all right to put use May Leaf teas in some non-profit short films I'm making? Yeah, of course, no problem at all. Thank Wait. you for asking. All right, let's taste these before are we going this way. All right. You know what? It's this one's darker, isn't it? Yeah, this is the darkest one, and then it's that one, and then it's that one. This is the lightest one. I think I already know which one I like. Hmm. Have you tasted them? Nope, I haven't tasted yet. That's so good. So good. So good. So good. However, I will say, is it yellow enough? Yeah, that's the only thing. There's like that, uh, like elderflower, Jam of some kind and yeah. pine nuts. Pine nuts is good call. Pine nuts is Which a good call. Really nice. Like yeah. gives it that warm. It's a great tea. Sweet. But when I drink it, yeah. my instinct is to say that's a green tea. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't yellow tea, but I think it by the looks it is. Yeah, it's kind of in between. You know, like you feel like it could be a yellow. I think it's more the yellow just because it's a little bit more Is that a green tea? Well, maybe, yeah. Warm. It's sweet, it's lovely, but is it different enough? It's got like that sunflower like seed thing. Sunflower seeds, good Scented call. Seed is, is, sunflower is seeds, yellow, yeah, no? yeah, yeah, yellow, yeah, usually. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great, great, great tea. Mm. For me, is it Sovereign Bud? I, I, I have to say maybe not, to be honest. It maybe might not. be a bit too green. Oh, you didn't give yourself any. Do you want a bit more? Oh, no, it's fine. All right. Right, let's try this one now. I've got leaves left. All right. So this one was a bit more yellow, a lot more yellow a in lot the more color. Yellow. But that doesn't mean that's good, right? No, it doesn't mean it's good. In fact, I have lower yeah. hopes for this one. Here we go. No. 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 That's confused. That's like hay and haystack and what is that musky note? Musky. It's, yeah, it's something not that pleasant. I don't find it that pleasant. It's like an old yellow tea. You know, it's like, yeah. it's, like it's been stored too yeah. long. 
Exactly. Yeah. It tastes like it was a good tea, but stored too long. Yeah. But it's as fresh. And I think that what they've done is they've heated this too much. Really? It's gone through too much moist heating. It does look... It's been... It's, and, and the heat has been more brown. too high a heat. It's not... It mm. sounds like they've... It feels like they've amped up the yellowing process by cranking up the heat. Mm. And they've overcooked. They've overcooked oh, it. Oh, no. Well, that's a no. 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 No, thank you. I mean, it's still a good tea. But no. No. Uh, well, this is it, people. Last chance for Sovereign Bud from this batch. Ooh. Oh, I like that flavor. Here we go. Mm. Huh. Mm. It's a great tea. Mm. Is it yellow enough, though? Honestly, it is yellow enough. I just don't think it's... Um, on the on par with Sovereign Bud from last it's year. It's not on a par with Sovereign Bud. Ah. I think none of these are actually, you know. Oh, balderdash! Gonna make your your life sing. They are great teas, though. They are great teas, but these two are a bit too a bit too under yellowed, mm. and this is over yellowed, <laughs> or too or old. too hot yellowed. They're, they're low Damn, man! I was re—I had really high hopes for these. Oh, frustrating! Yeah. I had really high hopes for those. Listen, you got a few, right? You got that I sweet. I know, few. but I wanted Sovereign Bud, and I think that yeah, we I will get be you. getting more samples. But I'm not quite sure that 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 they're going to be better because this was the scout that gave us the original oh, really? Sovereign Bud, yeah. Oh, so I will wow. be getting other samples, but I think that it's unlikely. Oh, sad times. Sad times, people. This is how we feel when we're doing sampling. We're like, no, we didn't get it. Let's see. Maybe there'll be some, some new scout or new producer that's going to wow us. Mm. We're going to brew them up again just to be sure. This one is... I think these two are my favorites. 100%. I think this is my favorite. Yeah, I think that's my favorite as yeah. well. Well, that's good, yeah. but that's that, my favorite. Yeah. Um, all right, should we reveal what they are? Oh, you, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got them. I've got a list here. All right, people, let's reveal. So this one here is Ganlu, and it's expensive. Whoa. Is that $1 a, a gram? That's $1 a gram. Oh, no. Oh, that's pricey. And oh, this one is... No. <laughs> oh no, this one is Ganlu, but it's $1.2 dollars. Is that the one that's not really good? Yes, oh. $1.2 dollars per gram. Yeah. Okay, I need to drink more of that then. <laughs> that's, that, that one really has got me. That one's really got yeah, me. Yeah, that one's like, yeah, that's the one I'm drinking. I'm again. tempted by that. This is um, Juya Ching, $1.20 a gram. Oh my goodness. Mm. No. 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 Um, Especially because it's ooh, pricier than that one. And I would have that one over that one. Yeah. Even though it's a different type of green tea. And um, no. these three are all Mengding Huangya, as, as we said. One dollar, one dollar twenty, one dollar twenty. <laughs> what the hell? What? Sorry, this one's the one dollar twenty. These two are the most expensive. This one is the least expensive, but they're still expensive. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're talking about twenty cents per gram. But that, difference. like, you can't. How can? Anyway, <laughs> clearly, someone was overconfident with their tea Ooh, making. Ooh, cool in it. Cool in it. Smackdown. Say it. Smack down. Say it. <laughs> a smackdown. Yeah, so these are some pricey little mm. babies. Um, and the one that really is still in my, like, in my sights is this one. Can you brew that one again? I sure can, Thank madame. You. Thank you very much. Because even though this one is a fabulous Ganlu, yeah. right? Yeah. I would definitely Far buy it. Fabulous. Like, the, the difference between them, that elegance and that sweetness, for that 20 cents, I would be... Mm. You know, <laughs> he's, he's, he is very tempted. I is, me. I is tempted by he that is one. He's definitely gonna get it. <laughs> she knows me too well. If I say I'm tempted, 
and she sees that little glint in my eye of like, I can't live without that tea, yeah. then it'll probably be happening. Um, Fishes. Fishesness. Um, right. Should we pour these? Do you want to do those? Yeah. Or should we leave them for the, to uh, brew longer? Like, I don't know how long we've been brewing for. Um, so. <gasps> ooh. Ah, oh, fail. Um, so this is how it works. And then what happens is we, you know, we taste, we reveal, we taste, we reveal. And then we basically just, you know, keep rolling through them. Um, it's important that we don't know the prices beforehand, clearly, because, you know, yeah. it affects our ability to, to taste. Um, so... Plus it's more fun, not knowing, you know? Yeah. It's like when you do a blind, the blind on tea, so you just, you just kind of search through more about what this, this tea is like. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's always like someone that, you know, says how good they are and how much they've done in their life and, you know, then kind of wow some people. But if you don't have all that con context, then you yeah, might exactly. get to know someone more pure. Yeah, exactly. Naturally. Find those pure artists. Mm. Um, a good bush is expensive. A great bush is priceless. <laughs> Definitely true. And <laughs> old bushes are... Exceptional. Exceptionally priceless. Um, damn it, man. The prices are, are hectic. Okay, so let's uh, taste these yellows again. Yeah. I'm going to blind you. Go for it. Tea number one. Um, Grayson Phillips says, is there any update on the black tea experiment? No, not really. It's sitting around. I don't know what to do with it. I might like just offer it up as samples or um, maybe like sell it at like basically cost um, or give it away with orders over a certain amount. Not quite sure. Not quite sure. Are you doing the three... Um... Yellows, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, so that was T number one. You ready for T number two? Yeah. T number two is in your cup. <laughs> Kimberly says, I'm going to blind you sounds like a threat. We're just so used to saying that. I know it sounds <laughs> a bit, I'm going to blind you. <laughs> Peaky blinders, I'm going to blind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, after watching that poor things when she stabs the eyeballs. Oh, yeah. man, that was rough. Um... That, that first one you gave me is so haystack, you know, it was so like, you know, you say it's like overly yellowed. It's like past that plus old and dusty. All right. What about number two? It's all right, but now I've got my eyes closed and I'll be like, it's not really doing it. Okay. You know, it's like it's, it's fine in its flavor but it's a little bit of like this dryness in the back of my throat that i'm not really that like enjoying that much right you ready for number three yeah i'll just pull this away okay here you go thank you oh I'm more enjoying this one. Mm -hmm. It's just got that nicer balance. Mm -hmm. There's less of that dryness in the throat. Mm -hmm. I think that has to be the one on that side. Because mm -hmm. it's got that pine nut thing, the elderflower, nice high note. It's definitely... Uh, that actually now has shocked me, that, that, that one. Why? Because it is much closer to Sovereign Bud on the second infusion. Yeah, I was going to say, it does remind me of it. That one is actually now doing my head in a little bit. Do we have any sovereign bud left over? Mm, I don't know. I guess a year, a year later. So. Hold on a minute. I think that this. You know what? Mm. Second infusion of that is. The first infusion was really good, brothy, but a bit yeah. too much like a green. Yeah. But the second infusion of that is. Yeah. Is really good. Yeah, it's really good. And also. So sweet. It feels like it covers the flavor around your mouth more and in your throat. Yeah. Like the aftertaste is really, really nice. Oh, that was expensive, that one. Yeah, it was a one, one. Oh. They're all expensive. I know, but that one was mega expensive. All right, this has been sitting for a bit, so okay. it might not be at its peak, but let's see. 
Oh, am I meant to blind? I mean, no, no, it's fine. Uh, mm. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. Mega. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so for me, these mm. two are still in the shortlist. That oh has actually like just just you know oh, the fragrance in that though. Yeah, the oh. fragrance. It reminds me of a green coil, right? Yeah, but even more yeah. like it's like the fragrance of green coil that's really nice and like bright. There's elderflower um, crazy notes is it's been tuned up with this tea. Yeah. You know. Oh, oh. I don't know, but having that one and then that one afterwards. You really you get so much sweetness. Yeah. yeah. Right there. Sia's question. Oh. Apparently I need to see Sia's question. What's Sia's question? Sia, 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 Sia. Can't see. Can't see Sia's question. Um, see a good question. Everyone asked on. Ask me what. Um, this is really good. This is really good. And actually, I don't know what's happened, but oh, you finished what? that. No. But the bamboo saber is really good as well. Oh, that's a different one. But man, what the, the, the sweetness. It's yeah. like I'm swallowing um, uh, sh sh icing sugar. Lush Disciple Tree Age. Is it not on the, I should write it on the website, shouldn't I? A 200 to 300 year old. Gushu. Uh, can you extend the aging experiment on Kimon in London? I, I can try, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I have a feeling that like from my expectation is it's just not going to, it's not going to budge. Ain't budging. This is the aftertaste, like candy floss um, melon or candy floss um, elderflower melon. <laughs> candy floss elderflower melon. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Sorry. Anyway. <clears throat> Try this. Bamboo saber. I think it's warming up to me. It's still a bit, mm, but I think it's warming up. I, I want to test it again with initial brew cooler mm, i get the bamboo freshness to it but because the other two was so much like i'm yeah fair enough it. and at one dollar twenty i'm getting a little green apple as well that's definitely yeah okay so end result is um that all the teas are good teas this one may be the least but all the teas definitely. all the teas are great teas <laughs> that one this and that nice. one I want to try one more of that. Yeah. Are the ones that I would definitely be putting forward to the shortlist. Sure. But they're pricey. But then that's the way it goes with these kinds of teas. Do you want any more of this one? Yes, thank you. I will have anything you're offering. <laughs> oh, fine. Oh, geez. Nothing to see here. All good. Ah. Right. Uh, any other questions? We've been going for an hour and uh, 40 minutes. Um, so we are past our bedtime. It's 156 of you <coughs> watching. <coughs> yeah. Lush Disciple. 200 to 300 year old tea trees. Um, they are, it's from Dash Reishan. The first Dash Reishan that we've sourced since Calamansi Swooper. Um, which which is a, a massive favorite. Different from Calamansi Swooper, but has some similarities. The key thing that I would like to say about this tea is written on the website, but pretty much it's got, it's got an amazing um, contrast and has intensity and contrast. And yet it is very balanced and very easy sipping. And that's what's amazing about it. It's like you can just sip it, sip it, sip it, sip it. You can just keep drinking it. It's like so easy sipping. Mm. Um, and uh, and it's, it's like quaffable. You go through like 15 infusions in a blink. It's so, so easy sipping. And yet it's pulling, it's pushing, it's, it's got sweetness. It's got loads of that really intense tropical floral like stickiness and resinous mm. quality. It's got like tons and tons of like, like zestiness and fruits it's got it's got minerals it's got a, a soft smooth oily mouthfeel that goes into this 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 uh, slaty astringency that just hits you with a bit of bitterness and then turns into hui gan it is like for me one of those ultimate poor experiences mm. and super super easy sipping and it got me so drunk that i forgot to focus on the video 
<laughs> really? So when you see the video on, uh, on Saturday, apologies, like, but half of it is out of focus. Or not no. half, but the tail end. Oh, no. Yeah. Bummer. Gives it an extra layer of, like, yeah, tea fuzz. drunkenness. I was, I was wankered. Um, anyway. Um, any plans on getting a Darjeeling Muscatel back in stock? Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll taste. It's not the season right now. Um, but we will taste. Angel's trumpets. Yeah, that's a flower. I was looking at that going, what? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of water are we using? We're using a tap water, mate. Uh, but it's been filtered multiple times and, and then bamboos, bamboo, bamboozled with bamboo and, uh, and granderized. Uh, it was, yeah, it was a, 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 a bad moment when I saw that it was all out of focus. That was not good. Um, Whenever I drink Playground, I brew it at 195, it's really strong. And if I go up to 25, it's much better. Should I go up even higher or just let the kettle cool down? Hmm. Play around. Try it. Play yeah. around. Um, and see what is right for you. Oops. Okay. So let's see. I want to taste one more time this Sovereign Bud. Mm -hmm. I'm already calling it Sovereign Bud. That's true. That's true. You are. Maybe uh, you should do another. <clears throat> Maybe you should taste it again tomorrow. Yeah, we've only got a little bit left, so I've got to Ooh, be very careful. Okay. You have to find a time when I've got a very clean palate. Very. It'll be the first tastings. And look at the moon cycle. <laughs> look at the moon cycle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Granderized. Oh, yes. That. Murat says, I, every time I drink from the Loud Zerni pot, I have to smile at how ridiculously good it is. It is true. It's legendarily good. Um, do you feel the same? I never see you using it, the pot in the streams. Yeah, it's true. We don't use it like on the streams that often mm. for some reason, but it is legendary. Um, you had mentioned in one of your videos that you had some ideas on building the perfect tea kettle. Any progress on this? No, it's mm. sort of been stuck a little bit because I haven't really found the right manufacturer and I haven't really been looking that much. Um, but um, yeah, it is... Um, it's something that is still on my mind. Um, I have to say that there are some kettles out there that are pretty close, but there's some functionality that I think could be better. Um, and yeah, it's not, it's not, um, not on the market yet. But there's one problem is that one of the companies, one of the ideas that I have, a company has a patent on it, but they're not using it, but they've got a patent on it. So I need to contact them and find out whether or not, um, yeah whether or not uh, it, they will allow me or work with me. Uh, they're talking about Grander online. It's a system that changes water, not a filter. Yep, uh, I asked the question just to bait Don. <laughs> you, you asked me the question about what? About Grander water? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can bait me about it. Everyone can, can, everyone can call me names and ridicule me. However, I think it works. So... <laughs> Bully for you. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ooh, I'm quite enjoying pouring from this. Are you? Yeah. Look. I am very much enjoying this tea. Okay. Didn't want some. <laughs> I am very much enjoying this tea. What is it about it? Like it keeps getting better yeah. through infusions. Because that's my favorite brew yeah. now. Ah, I'm impressed. It's got a little bit of a creamy toffee note, nuts. It's, it's yellowed enough. Oof. Oh, hello. Ooh. Can you pour some more water just Ooh, today? Oh, hello. Uh, I think that this is one of those teas that you could just keep brewing and it's just going to be like yeah. immaculate. It's like it shows you a little bit and then it shows you a bit more and it just keeps going. And it leaves you with sweetness. So you're just like, oh my gosh, that and was such a lovely time. And the sweetness is a caramel sweetness. It's that caramel. Yeah. Caramel. But it is a bit more fudgy, I would say, than caramel. Oh, and now you're picking hairs. Fudge and caramel. Yeah, but caramel can be like this, like, brittle, kind of have a little bit more of a burn, not burnt, but, like, you know, deeper note. Whereas fudge is way brighter okay. and creamier. Fair enough. I don't eat that much fudge, by the way. <laughs> I just remember it because it's such a sweet thing. This tea is so sweet as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's so, just so, so sweet. sweet. So sweet. I think we may have our sovereign bud. 
I honestly, that, that, in, those two last infusions are incredible. Yeah. Incredible. It's, it's true. I'm just impressed how it's like gotten better of infusions. I oh, like it when it the tea is, does that. That like is an it. amazing tea. People, sovereign bud might be coming in and it's expensive, but it might be coming in. Isn't it? Gandalf and sovereign bud, I think. How, how much was it last year? Was it similar? I think it's similar. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it's a treat tea. But then I say that for most teas that we sell. <laughs> but this is a treat yeah. tea. Yeah, we will try to find some more affordable teas as well. Believe me, we are always on the lookout for, ah, for, for good deals. It's great when it's a good deal. Yeah, I love I it. I love it. That is so good. That is so good. Yeah, I want to, because last time I brewed it about a minute because I was looking at the time. And I was like, okay, it's been about a minute. So I wonder, I mean, it can't get worse, you brew basically. It, brew it up. Brew it long. Brew it up, people. And good to eat. All right, last questions before we disappear from your screens. Once again, big up yourselves, everybody who, have, who has tuned in. Yeah, thank I'm you. feeling a little bit lifted right now. 150 of you in the chat. Green tea lifted is a very different kind of lifted to poor lifted. It's less like, oh, and it's more just like this theanine, yeah. caffeine, theanine, it's still going to keep us awake. It's like focused, but um, it's like a calm focus, but alert at the same time. You know, I, uh, yeah. I can, I, it, it makes sense why um, people that do meditation like to have yeah. green tea. It really yeah, does. This is a very, very good for really meditation. Yeah. Um, Beth Especially is asking one. us to make no. a self-made Dragon Ball. I actually did. Did I shoot that? No, I didn't shoot that. But I did try it out, try different methods. So I will do a video about how to make your own Dragon Balls. Yeah. Um, and then maybe, yeah, we could use it for the, for the Chiman, for sure. Oh. <laughs> With all of these teas, I might as well just send you my checks every payday. I feel uh, you, man. I feel you. I feel you. Just New York. Just don't buy. <laughs> Sorry. Just, yeah. um, New York was amazing. Loved it. Love New York. Pete's, such Pete's a essential, vibe. such a vibe. I mean, it's like a second home for me because I lived there. Um, and yeah, yeah I, I, I've always loved spending time. People have such a like, has, like a, their, their hustle, but they're also really friendly. Yeah, you know, I mean, like you can nice... get New Yorkers that are a bit punchy, but it's all right. Yeah. So. But you can get like English dudes that are really punchy. Oh too. yeah, different kind of punchy. <laughs> different kind of different punchy. Kind of punchy. You no, prefer New York a New great. York punch, puncher or an uh, English... In terms of violence, yeah, I would 100% prefer to be like around Americans than the, a, a UK someone who's violent. Yeah, they're scary, man. Yeah, they're scary. <laughs> they're scary. Those like <sighs> <laughs> you, you feel like yeah, they've been yeah they've been in that cold intense. look in their eyes, yeah, that intense. peaky blinder like I'm yeah. gonna it's, mess you up. It's, it's intense. That like sure. I just want to punch someone because I feel like punching somebody. Look, it's, it's like when we uh, went to that comedy sh nightclub and then yeah. we, we saw these two dudes walk in, and you know it's the it's the posture. Yeah, it's that <laughs> posture. That. They're looking for a fight, <laughs> looking for a brawl. Yeah, uh, Incredible says you do pretty good on price. Thank you so much. It's nice to hear. We try. Um, uh, Marco says the theanine flow state indeed. Um, Beth says it's a happy cloud of lifted, tea lifted. True. Yeah. Uh, tea is better than money anyway. <laughs> I like the, I like the, the, uh, the approach. Uh, oh, it's, it's all disappearing now. JS8 was so good. I'm happy you enjoyed it. Uh, don't count on Selena as your outside salesperson. <laughs> yeah, just don't buy. <laughs> no, man. Uh, the platinum tongue card by Mayleaf. Hey, I love that idea. Should Ooh. we do our own credit cards? How does that even work? Um, thoughts on white teas? No, we can't do it. No, thoughts no. on white teas from outside of China, more experimental, experimental perhaps? Yeah, we well, have tasted lots and lots and lots of white teas from other countries. Um, general feeling is that they have a lot of aroma, but a lacking body. Um, and I think that that um, is a lot to do with processing and cultivar. Um, Don L just arrived. Please go on for another hour. <laughs> so uh, I think we're, we are teed up. Um, oh, love you, your live sessions. Been watching the old ones the past few weeks. Thank you for joining us. Flavi Evangelina. Oh, nice Sounds name. Like very.
dramatic name. I like it. Uh, New Gabba soon. Um, nope, that will be being picked in sort of May, probably. Um, yeah, I'd rather have a little tea and no money than a little money and no tea. <laughs> uh, Vietnamese white tea is interesting. Yeah, Vietnam, we, we're definitely um, going to try and dive into Vietnam a little Some bit good more. Ones there for sure. um, May leaf white teas are superb. Thank you so much. We, we, Take Thank our time. You. I had a white tea from Nepal and it was pretty good, but definitely more aroma than taste. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Nepalese white teas, very aroma forward, like bright, high Himalayan, yeah. like wow. Yeah, it's you're, like, that, you're just like, if it tastes anything but, like this, it's going to be great. But and then, then eh, it loses. Eh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's gone skis it's in the taste. Traits. It's a bit frustrating. I am getting people <laughs> sending me teas, which is really cool. I mean, I'm finding this really, it's kind of flattering. Producers, in, in other countries outside of China <clears throat> are now sending me teas to taste like and then give them advice on processing, which is kind of like That's very flattering, cool. but also like I'm not a tea processor. I can give you an, a guess, but I, you know, I don't do tea production myself, but I still enjoy the process. I mean, I think if I was someone, you know, outside watching your YouTube, I'd, I'd think, well, you've seen a lot of processing. I've seen so... a lot of processing. I can taste yeah. stuff that I can imagine is to do with the processing. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy to give my, like, two cents. But it's really great to yeah. taste these sort of experimental it's very, teas. Very and cool. It's really cool. But you do work them out quite well. Because when you were, like, blind tasting me on them, <clears throat> I couldn't really work out what processing was, like, missing, what needed to be, you know, changed. So... It's kind of hard because it was like in between teas, isn't it? Yeah. No, so there are definitely <laughs> some in betweeners. There's like... definitely some in betweeners. Like a yeah. lot of people trying to make oolong teas in other countries and it's sort of in between. What's interesting is that I don't like them to tell me the processing and I want to guess. Yeah, no, that's And usually that's my good. guesses are pretty good. So that that's good. Um, right. Yeah. Enough from us, I think. Uh, we have been going for nearly an hour, uh, nearly two hours. So um, we need to decaffeinate. Mm. Um, we've got some very good teas in front of us and two that I think are going to be a little bit difficult for us to let go of, mm. even though they are going to be expensive. And uh, the phrase of flying a, a helicopter under a bridge comes into mind in that we're going to have to try to like just like, get the right level to order it within our budget. I don't know. Maybe maybe we will um, see if we can. Um, well, we have to see what the batch sizes are. Yeah, but you know, but that one is amazing. That that sovereign bod. Christine, great. many thanks. Just want to say thank you so much for always sharing your tea sessions with us and teaching about tea and tasting. You two are such cool people. Well, thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. You very you much appreciate it. Cool. Yes, Obviously. extremely cool <laughs> tea slingers in the house. The Wednesday crew, the live crew. If you're watching this on rerun, then try to join us live. Join in the chat. Ask us questions. We're going to be back next week. Uh, Wednesday to continue the uh, the journey and maybe we'll have some more sampling maybe we'll do something a bit different check out Lush Disciple video on Saturday even if a bit of it is out of focus um, and uh, and if you pick it up you are in for an absolute treat I have like there are teas that I'm always a bit like oh that's a bit of a wild one that's a bit edgy mm. and then there are teas that you just like that's it <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah and Lush Disciple is one of them yeah. um, and um, I'm happy that uh Everybody who got JSA is happy with their JSA because obviously that's a big one for us. Um, why are there not more likes is what Kyle is saying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kyle. Let me just check. 67 likes. I don't like the number 67. I prefer over 100 no, it's if possible. We're watching it rise. We're watching it rise, people. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bribe you into uh chasing into, the into likes cha is not, chasing the likes yeah it's, it's not a good look it's not it a good look it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't matter it does it's not a good look anyway everybody out there big up yourselves thank you for joining us and i um hope that you have a lovely rest of the week and that you have a gorgeous weekend mm. um it's going to be a bit sunny in london Hopefully so it's sunny where you are. We're gonna we're gonna enjoy that after a long winter, and hopefully mm. um, it'll continue. Uh, and I'm just rabbiting on. Was there anything you'd like to say before we say adieu? I, I always say the same thing. So I'm just gonna say good night, good day, and see you next time. Ciao for now, people. Love ya and leaving ya. Adios. Adios. Au revoir.
Au revoir.